Micro and Nano Manufacturing. Me 474. Module 5. Part 2. Presented by. Jithu C. John. Assistant Professor. Department of Mechanical Engineering. Government Engineering College, Koja Code. 4. 8th Semester. B.Tech, Mechanical Engineering. APJ Abdul Kalam Technological University. Kerala. Nanofabrication using manipulative techniques. It is a promising way of producing nano-based electronic components using processes such as Scanning tunneling microscopy. Atomic force microscopy. Spin polarized scanning tunneling microscopy. Dip pen nanolithography. Scanning tunneling microscopy. It is a process that relies on a very sharp tip connected to a cantilever beam to touch a surface composed of atoms that is electrically conductive. It is a process that is conducted in an ultra-high vacuum where a sharp metal tip is brought into extremely close contact, less than 1 nm, to a conducting surface. This instrument basically consists of a very sharp tip which position is controlled by piezoelectric elements which converts voltage into mechanical deformation. The figure explains the working of scanning tunneling microscopy. A tunneling microscope consists in a metallic tip with applied voltage. The tip is brought very near the surface of a metallic sample made of atoms. When the voltage is applied between the tip and the sample, electrons are extracted from the surface by quantum tunneling. This creates an electrical current between the tip and the surface. Tunneling occurs only at very short distances, when the tip lies on top of an atom. By drawing the current intensity ersus the tip location, one can deduce the position of the atoms of the metal surface down to a resolution better than 0.1 nanometer. Tunneling microscope can also be used FR spectroscopy. The tip current is now measured versus applied voltage. The obtained graph depends on the electronic properties of the sample's electrons at the location of the tip. It gives information about the electronic properties of the material down to nanometer scale. In practice, physicists prefer to measure the derivative of this graph. One can also use the tunneling microscope to move atoms. For example, in some materials, one can bring the tip very close to the atom which allows to raise it and move it somewhere else. The scanning tunneling MICR scope STM therefore allows to reconstruct the image of the surface with atomic, but also to perform atomic spectroscopy and even manipulate individual atoms. The applied voltage is such that the energy barrier is lowered so that electrons can tunnel through the air gap. There are two modes of operation. 1. Topography mode, where the tip scans in the XY plane and the tunneling current is kept constant. 2. Constant height mode, where the tip is scanned in the XY plane at constant depth and the tunneling current is modulated. The Atomic Force Microscope, AFM it is used in ambient conditions and in ultra-high vacuums. A sharp tip connected to a cantilever beam is brought into contact with the surface of the sample. The surface is scanned, causing the beam to deflect that is monitored by a scanning laser beam. AFM probes are typically thin tips, etched to a near-atomic dimension, mounted at the end of a cantilever. When the probe tip is brought into close proximity with the surface, the cantilever deflects by an amount proportional to the atomic force between the probe and the surface. The amount of deflection is commonly monitored by beam deflection. A laser beam is deflected from a source, 
off the top of the candle ever, and to a position sensitive photodiode. As the candle ever deflection changes, the position of the beam on the photodiode also changes. Candle ever deflection can be monitored through embedded piezoresistive or piezoelectric material, interferometry, capacitance, or tunneling current. There are also several different types of AFM, classified into dynamic and static methods. The most common static method is referred to as contact AFM. With this variant, the probe tip is brought to within the region where the forces between the tip and the surface are repulsive. As the probe is moved, the probe height is controlled to result in the same amount of cantle ever deflection. Non-contact AFM is a dynamic process. The probe tip is oscillated near its eigenfrequency, and the probe height is controlled to keep this frequency constant. Non-contact AFM is the only SFM process to achieve atomic resolution. Between these two variants is another dynamic process term tapping AFM. The probe tip is vibrated by approximately 20 to 100 Nm such that the probe tip moves in and out of the repulsive force regime. The probe height is controlled to provide a constant amplitude of vibration. Tapping AFM has the advantage of being limited in resolution only by tip geometry, similar to contact AFM, but with significantly lower lateral forces than encountered in contact AFM. The resolution of an AFM, when operated under proper environmental conditions, is primarily limited by tip geometry. The tip can be thought of as a cone or a pyramid. The height and angle of the pyramid as well as the sharpness of the tip are the important limiting factors. Because of this, uncertainty in the calibration of AFM probe tips is important to low uncertainty measurement. The AFM has the advantage of imaging almost any type of surface, including polymers, ceramics, composites, glass, and biological samples. The tip is micromachined from materials such as silicon tungsten, diamond, iron, cobalt, samarium, iridium, or cobalt samarium permanent magnets. An AFM is an atomic force microscope. It lets you see things that are very, very small, all the way down to the nanoscale. How does an AFM work? An AFM uses a cantilever with a very sharp tip to scan over a sample surface. As the tip approaches the surface, the close-range attractive forces between the surface and the tip cause the cantilever to bend towards the surface. However, as the cantilever is brought even closer to the surface, increasingly repulsive forces cause the cantilever to bend away from the surface. An AFM has a Z scanner that moves the cantilever up and down, an XY scanner that moves the sample back and forth underneath the cantilever, and a position detector that records the bending of the cantilever. The position sensor works by tracking a laser beam that is reflected off the flat top of the cantilever. Any bending in the cantilever will cause changes in the direction of the reflected beam. The position detector then tracks and records those beam changes. Using the detection method explained earlier, an AFM images the topography of a sample surface by scanning the cantilever over a region of interest. The raised and lowered features on the sample surface influence the bending of the cantilever measured by the position detector. AFM generates an accurate topographic map of the surface by using a feedback loop to control the height of the tip above the surface. There are two major methods of AFM imaging, contact AFM and non-contact AFM. In contact AFM, the cantilever scans across a sample with its tip touching the sample surface. Because the tip is in contact with the surface, strong repulsive forces cause the cantilever to bend as it passes over the surface features. The advantage of this method is the relative simplicity of its technology. However, there are disadvantages. One disadvantage is that the sample can be damaged by the gouging action of the sharp tip. Another disadvantage is that while the tip is gouging away at the surface, it also grinds down the tip, which reduces the quality of your image. In non-contact AFM, the cantilever oscillates just above the surface while it scans, but the tip does not touch the surface. 
A precise, high-speed feedback loop is used to keep the cantilever tip from crashing into the surface, thus retaining tip sharpness and leaving the surface untouched. As the tip approaches the surface, interactions between the tip and the surface cause the oscillation amplitude of the cantilever to decrease. The feedback loop corrects for these amplitude deviations and constructs an image of the surface topography. Non-contact AFM has many advantages over contact AFM. It preserves your sample surface because the tip and surface are not touching. By prolonging the sharpness and lifetime of the tip, it allows for high quality imaging over many scans. This also brings down the total operating cost of the instrument as tips are expensive to replace. Atomic Force Microscope, or AFM, is a powerful tool that enables you to see, explore, and obtain measurement data from your samples at the nano scale. For more information, please visit parkafm.com. First figure shows the AFM and TS image modes such as contact mode and non-contact mode. Third figure illustrates the laser and the position detector. Second schmetaic figure showing the photo detector, laser, and probe. CN tubes. A carbon nanotube is based on a two-dimensional graphene sheet. Carbon nanotubes can be manufactured by arc discharge, laser ablation, and chemical vapor deposition methods. Carbon nanotube are in the form of multi-wall carbon nanotubes, MWCNT, or single-wall carbon nanotubes, SWCNT. The figure illustrates a single-wall carbon nanotubes, SWCNT, on the left side and multi-wall carbon nanotubes, MWCNT, on the right side. Types of carbon nanotubes. Single-walled carbon nanotubes, SWNT. A single-walled carbon nanotube, SWCNT, may be thought of as a single atomic layer thick sheet of graphene rolled into a seamless cylinder. Most single-walled nanotubes have a diameter of close to 3 nanometer, with a tube length that can be many 104 times longer. Multi-walled carbon nanotubes, MWNT. Multi-walled nanotubes, MWCNT, consist of multiple rolled layers, concentric tubes, of graphite. MWCNT can have OD20 nm, ID3 nm length can be 104 times longer. Graphene. Graphene is basically a 20 single layer of graphite. Graphene is stronger and stiffer than diamond, however, can be stretched like rubber. The CC bond, sp2, length in graphene is 0.142 nm. The graphene sheets stack to form graphite with an interplanar spacing of 0.335 nm. The given figures illustrates the graphene and carbon nanotubes. Graphene can rolled up to make carbon nanotubes. The structure of carbon nanotubes. The structure of a single wall carbon nanotube is specified by the vector called chiral vector. Depending on the chiral indices, N1, N2, and chiral angle, E, SWCNT can be classified into zigzag, E equals 0, armchair, E equals 30, chiral, OE30. Depending upon their different structures, CNT scan exhibit metallic or semiconducting properties. Image result for types of carbon nanotube. Image result for types of carbon nanotube. The image illustrates the Cavon nanotubes classification into zigzag, armchair, and chiral structures. Properties of carbon nanotubes. Mechanical. Stiff and robust structures. CC bonds in graphite, and nanotubes, is the one of the strongest bonds in nature. Flexible, do not break when bent. Conductivity. Extremely high thermal conductivity. 
extremely high electrical conductivity. The figure illustrates the properties of carbon nanotubes. Applications of carbon nanotubes The physical properties of C nanotubes make them of potential use in nanotechnology engineering. Energy storage, for fuel cells. Composite materials. Field emitting devices, flat panel displays. X-rays to go CNTs could shrink machine size considerably. Nanotube chemical sensors. AFM probes are currently being employed to construct semiconducting elements such as carbon nanotube logic inverters and carbon nanotube transistors using the cantilever beam and tip to push carbon nanotubes into place after depositing them close to the source, drain, and gate of the transistor. This makes the AFM a manipulative nanofabricating tool that is currently solving the very problems created by scaling down the size of electronic devices to the nano scale. Figure explains the carbon nanotube transistor showing transistor characteristics. Courtesy of IBM. Image result for carbon nanotube transistors. CVD Diamond Technology Diamond is an advanced material with an excellent combination of physical and chemical properties. If high-quality diamond films with comparable properties to natural diamond can be formed with low surface roughness. Properties of Diamond Hardest known materials High wear resi sanchi Chemical inertness Highest thermal conductivity Biological inertness High resis TV, insulator. Semiconducting when suitably doped negative electron affinity. Application. Cutting tools. Electrochemical sensors. Heat spreaders. In vitro applications, coatings and sensors. Electronic devices. Sensors. Cold cathode electron sources. The most successful process for low-pressure growth of diamond has been chemical vapor deposition, CVD, from energetically activated hydrocarbon-hydrogen gas mixtures. CVD is a process whereby a thin solid film is synthesized from the gaseous phase via a chemical reaction. All the CVD techniques employed to deposit diamond films require a means of activating gas phase carbon-containing precursors. CH4 Chemical vapor deposition, CVD, is a vacuum deposition method used to produce high-quality, high-performance, solid materials. The process is often used in the semiconductor industry to produce thin films. Precursor gases, often diluted in carrier gases, are delivered into the reaction chamber at approximately ambient temperatures. As they pass over or come into contact with a heated substrate, they react or decompose forming a solid phase which and are deposited onto the substrate. The substrate temperature is critical and can influence what reactions will take place. High gas temperatures which generates atomic hydrogen and produces reactive carbon species. This involves mainly thermal, hot filament, or plasma, microwave, activation, or use of a combustion flame, oxyacetylene torch. The deposition rate differs from one CVD deposition technique to another, and it is generally observed that higher deposition rates can be achieved at a cost, and that is the quality of the films. Types of Diamond CVD Processes Plasma Enhanced CVD RF Plasma Enhanced CVD DC Plasma Enhanced CVD Microwave Plasma Enhanced CVD Hot Filament CVD, HF CVD Plasma Enhanced CVD Plasmas generated by various forms of electrical discharges or induction heating have been employed in the growth of diamond. The role of the plasma is to generate atomic hydrogen and to produce the necessary carbon precursors for diamond growth. RF Plasma Enhanced CVD Radio frequency power can be applied to create plasma in two electrode configurations. 
radio frequency, RF, plasma excitation, which employs frequencies of usually 13.56 MHz. The use of higher power results in physical and chemical sputtering, leading to contamination of the diamond films. DC Plasma Enhanced CVD Plasma in a H2 hydrocarbon mixture is excited by applying a DC bias across two parallel plates, one of which is the substrate. Being able to coat large areas and the potential for very high growth rates. Under high stress and to contain high concentrations of hydrogen as well as impurities by plasma erosion of the electrodes. Microwave Plasma Enhanced CVD Microwave frequency can oscillate electrons, collision of electrons with gaseous atoms and molecules generates high ionization fractions. Electrodeless process, avoids contamination of the films due to electrode erosion. Higher plasma density with higher energy electrons, effectively resulting in higher concentrations and efficient diamond growth. As the plasma is confined to the center, no carbon deposition onto the walls of the chamber. Hot filament CVD, HFCVD. It was observed that atomic hydrogen produced by the passage of H2 over a refractory metal filament, tungsten, heated to temperatures between 2000 and 2500 Kelvin. Atomic H was added to the hydrocarbon, it was observed that diamond could be deposited while graphite formation was suppressed. This method enabled increase in the diamond deposition rate. The nucleation and growth of diamond on non-diamond substrates. Simplicity and comparatively low operating cost. A wide variety of refractory materials have been used as filaments including tungsten, tantalum, and rhenium due to their high electron emissivity. Refractory metals, which form carbides, example, tungsten and tantalum, typically must carbonize their surface before supporting the deposition of diamond films. The process of filament carbonization results in the consumption of carbon from the CH4, and thus a specific incubation time is needed for the nucleation of diamond films. The volume expansion due to carbon incorporation leads to cracks, which reduces the lifetime of the filament. The first figure illustrates the working of hot filament CVD. HFCVD. The second image shows the low temperature hot filament chemical vapor deposition of ultra nanocrystalline diamond films. Advantages of the CVD process. The process is gas phase in nature, therefore, given a uniform temperature, the deposition rate will be similar on all surfaces. Variable and complex shaped surfaces. Screw threads, blind holes, channels, or recesses, can therefore be coated evenly without build-up on edges. Disadvantages of the CVD process The CVD process is carried out at relatively high temperatures, therefore, limitations due to dimensional tolerances are an important consideration. Components that have tight dimensional tolerances will not be amenable to CVD. Liga process. The MEMS micro machining process known as Liga utilizes the following three fabrication process steps lithography, electroplating, molding. Liga is a German acronym for lithography, galvaniforming, abforming. Liga fabrication is used to create high aspect ratio structures through the use of X rays produced by a synchrotron or relatively low aspect ratio structures through the use of UV, ultraviolet, Light. The Liga process involves the following steps. A very thick, up to hundreds of microns, resist layer of polymethyl meth acrylate, PMMA, is deposited onto a primary substrate. The PMMA is exposed to collimated X rays and is developed. Metal is electro deposited onto the primary substrate. The PMMA is removed or stripped, resulting in a freestanding metal structure. Plastic injection molding takes place. The Liga fabrication process is composed of Exposure Development Electroforming Stripping 
Replication Liga Process The figure illustrates Liga Process in step by step. It consists of apply coating, radiation, development of PMA, electroplate through PMA, and separation. Liga Micro Machining Process Step 1 Coat thick photoresist on a substrate with an electrically conductive surface. Step 2 Irradiation X-ray lithography with extended exposure from highly collimated X radiation to penetrate thick resist with well-defined side walls. Irradiation involves exposing a thick layer of resist to high energy beam of X rays from a synchrotron. The mask membrane is normally a low atomic number material such as diamond, beryllium, or a thin membrane of a higher atomic number material such as silicon or silicon carbide. Step 3, Development, in this step the pattern is etched into the resist substrate by the use of X-rays and desired structure are formed. Step 4, Electroforming, metal electroplated on the exposed conductive substrate surface. Electroforming is the same as electroplating. Electroforming suggests that the plating is used to create an actual metal component. Step 5, after photoresist removal, metal structure formed may be used as mold. Sacrificial techniques are combined with the basic Liga process to create partially freed, flexure suspended structure or completely freed devices. Advantages Allows material other than silicon to be used. Better precision and low surface roughness. Can fabricate arbitrary cross sections. Mass production of parts is possible. Can use polymers and ceramics. Limitations. Synchrotron radiation source is not widely available. Results may vary depending on the deposition method used. Thermal evaporation and plasma sputtering. Applications of LIGA. Fabrication of actuators and mechanisms. Precision of LIGA allow shafts, contacting parts, bearings, and gears to have with minimal friction. Also produces micro-sized sensors. Capacitive accelerometer, microgyroscope, micromotors, fluid control valves. Fabrication of spinnerets, which have smooth surfaces and fixed geometries to produce textile fiber efficiently. Fabrication of optical components in large quantity, microspectrometer, Distance sensor, polarization sensor. Fabrication of biomedical items such as drug delivery systems, cancer biomarking. References <laughs>